Nearly a billion people around the world live in extreme poverty. Many more face hunger and disease or have no access to healthcare and education. Providing over 50% of all global development aid, the EU is by far the world's largest donor. The EU's development policy, coordinated between the European Commission, the Parliament and the 28 member states and implemented in cooperation with NGOs, international partners and of course beneficiary countries themselves, seeks to eradicate poverty and build a fairer world. But how does it work? Come with us and we'll show you. Let's start with the Commission. Europe Aid, the Directorate in Charge of Development and Cooperation, is responsible for designing the EU's development policy and delivering aid throughout the world. The sectors of intervention range from human rights and governance to food and agriculture, infrastructures, environment and energy, health and education, and depend on the needs of partner countries. Five years after the earthquake that devastated Haiti, staff working in the Caribbean team are assessing the impact of the development assistance given to the country after the EU's humanitarian aid and civil protection unit delivered the much-needed short-term relief. For us, it was a big challenge, and we have really reached people on the ground. I think every second person that is living today in Haiti is benefiting from the EU aid. We needed to ensure housing to the population. We needed to support basic social services, like education was one of the priorities, and certainly supporting health sector. Development aid is financed directly by the EU budget as part of the financial instruments for external action and also by the European Development Fund. Together with trade, security and foreign policy instruments, they shape the EU's relations with the outside world. One of the oldest partners of the EU's development aid are the countries in the African, Caribbean and Pacific regions. In Strasbourg, elected representatives of the ACP states meet their European Parliament counterparts in a joint parliamentary assembly. Chairing the meeting is Louis Michel, former European Commissioner for Development and Humanitarian Aid and current member of the Parliament's Development Committee. The Parliament has, in fact, its power of control, its power of initiative, its power to propose things. We propose many things, and often, d'ailleurs, the line followed by the Parliament percolates on the states. If there was no the Parliament, I think that the aid to public development European would be even more. Apart from having a say on the EU budget for development and keeping a close eye on those using EU aid funds, the Parliament has very concrete tools to support development. For instance, EU election observation missions, which are always led by a member of Parliament. Another important partner in development policy are NGOs and international organizations such as UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. Today, UNICEF and members of the European Parliament are coming together to discuss how to better protect children in armed conflicts. Every day in this world, some 250,000 children wake up, use and abuse their soldiers. And you have to know that four out of ten of these children are girls. This is not acceptable. In the last seven years, the Commission has contributed 845 million euros to UNICEF to support education and child protection projects, maternal health and to combat female genital mutilation. The EU's and global development efforts have lifted millions out of poverty, but the world is still short of achieving the Millennium Development Goals agreed by world leaders in 2000. To raise awareness of the situation, the EU has declared 2015 the European Year for Development. It is also the deadline to achieve the Millennium Development Goals and define new targets. And maybe also an opportunity to show European taxpayers that every euro spent on development benefits both the poorest in the world and EU citizens themselves.